the day on Rappler. Supreme Court ruling may render 82,000 optical or PCOS machines useless. The National Bureau of Investigation calls the Mamasapano incident murder. And promoter Bob Arum refuses to sign the latest draft of the Mayweather Pacquiao contract. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez. This is Rappler's Rap for the Day a list of the most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. The Supreme Court, or SC, nullifies a contract between the Commission on Elections and technology provider Smartmatic for the diagnostics, maintenance, repair, and replacement of precinct count optical scan or PCOS machines. Because of the SC's ruling, the Philippines cannot use its 82,000 PCOS vote counting machines for the presidential elections in 2016. Last March, Comelec spokesman James Jimenez says the poll body will not use PCOS machines without proper maintenance and repair. Because of the ruling, the Comelec says it is also looking into other alternatives to avoid a no-election scenario in 2016, including manual voting, converting the PCOS into a counting center optical scan model with many precincts sharing one machine. This comes towards the tail end of President Benigno Aquino's term, whose satisfaction rating drops to less than 50%. The latest Social Weather Stations, or SWS, survey released Tuesday says 48% of respondents were satisfied with the government's performance in the first quarter of 2015, while 23% were undecided and 29% were dissatisfied. A special investigation team recommends the filing of charges against 90 individuals over the death of Special Action Force or SAF troops in Maguindanao last January. In a joint report by the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, and the National Prosecution Service, or NPS, the 90 face charges of direct assault, complexed with murder, murder and theft. The report also says the more Islamic Liberation Front and other breakaway groups committed murder all the way and around. When they crossed the river in Barangay to Canalipao, Mama Sapano, to finish off the dying members of the SAF. The report's findings run contrary to the claims of an MILF commander who earlier said they only found out that they were fighting SAF troopers at 2.30 in the afternoon. The mother of the overseas Filipino worker or OFW on Indonesia's death row says her family once served President Benigno Aquino's family. Celia, the mother of OFW Mary Jane Veloso, hopes Aquino would help save her daughter from death by firing squad. Mahabang panahon po ng serbisyo ang pamilya namin sa kanila. Tatay ko, biyanan ko, mister ko, nagtrabaho po sa Asenda Lusita nila. Noong nilapitan po niya kami para dalhin siya noong butuhan, May 2010 po, dinala po namin siya dahil ang alam po namin, meron po kaming tatakbuhan. Hmm. She adds the government's efforts to save her daughter are too late, and the fact that they are given legal support is not true. Wala po yung pagkilos nila na yun. Dito nga po sa Manila, dalawang taon may higit po kami lumalakad talaga. Ala ko kami na hinga ni. Celia also accused the DFA of withholding information about their daughter. Maski po yung attorney na... Aquino earlier wrote to Indonesian President Joko Widodo or Jokowi to request clemency for Mary Jane. Philippine Vice President Jejumar Binay is in Indonesia to meet Jokowi to negotiate on Mary Jane's case. Environmentalist Yeb Sanyo resigns from his post as Philippine Climate Change Commissioner. Sanyo did not give a reason for his resignation, but in a statement released Wednesday, he says, quote, I will be working with different faith groups across the world as part of the larger global climate movement. Sanyo will embark on a 1,500-kilometer climate pilgrimage from Rome to Paris to take place during the upcoming Paris Climate Conference. Sanya's resignation comes four months after he was left out of a crucial United Nations conference in Lima, Peru. In 2012, Sanya broke down during a conference in Warsaw when Super Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda destroyed the Philippines. His emotional pleas were often accompanied by hunger strikes to ramp up political will for controversial issues in the climate talks. 
Top-ranked Chief Bob Arum refuses to sign the latest draft of the agreement for the Floyd mayweather Manny Pacquiao superfight to be staged at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada on May 2. Arum says the draft he received on April 15 is not the deal the Pacquiao camp originally agreed to, citing that top rank was left out as one of the signatories of the contract. This means the top rank will not have control of decisions during the event, including in-arena production, video content, and music. Aram says, quote, We agreed that we would all be signatories on the final contract, and then they sent us a draft of the agreement and it excluded us. While venue issues remain unresolved, Pacquiao is sure to make $2.25 million alone from sponsorships on his fight trunks. This on top of receiving 40% of the super fight's revenue. Six different companies bought advertising space on Pacquiao's trunks that he will wear when he fights Mayweather. There is no design of Pacquiao's trunks released up to now. For those on desktop, click on the links on your screen. You can also click on the tabs below to go to a story in the video. And for those on smartphones and tablets, the links can be found below the video. Rappler has a patented user engagement model that puts a mood meter on every story. Looking at the mood navigator, the story with the biggest circle is... Mitch Legayo of Jamich, I'm trying to be strong. This has 74% of readers saying they don't care. Today, most people don't care. That's the wrap for Tuesday for today, Wednesday, April 22, 2015. Visit Rappler.com for the latest news here and around the world. Check out our other shows, SciTech for you and Rappler Talk. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Natasha Gutierrez as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.